Hello guys, if you guys are blessed, my name is James. We'll be speaking about the secret place. You know, I'm gonna give some about five points very quickly on it. Psalms 91, 1 to 2. Let's explain a little bit about what the secret place is. It says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. You know, we grow to trust God more through the secret place. You know, people that struggle a lot and things like that, most of the time they don't dwell in the secret place. How do I know that? Because I've seen a lot of experience in that and I've seen experience in my own life. When I dwell in it, I am a lot more peaceful than usual. I'm less distracted than everything else. And that's, and that's actually how we should grow inside the Lord to begin to do that. So before I go through these points, let's continue. Let's go ahead and go to Psalms 31. 2021, 20, it says, You hide them in the secret place of your presence from conspiracies of men. You keep them secretly in a shelter from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has made marvelous his loving kindness to me in besieged city. In a besieged city. So it goes on to say that in the secret place, you know, he prevents the enemies from being able to touch them with strife of tongues. Remember that the words that come out of people's mouth are like an attack, they're like arrows. So the number one thing is not canceling it and attacking the enemy. The number one thing, if you abide in God and He in you, He's going to protect you from all of the enemy's arrows. It's really the secret. The secret is really the secret place. And that's in private prayer in the Word of God, studying the Word, studying the Word of God, and meditating on it, and beginning to pray to God, and taking time out to the side to actually pray with God. Not just being on your phone while you're sitting there praying. I'm talking about actual time with God, actually beginning to discipline yourself to get inside the presence of God. Hallelujah is where it's all about Him. It's all about Him. So Song of Solomon 2.14, we'll go there really fast. We'll begin to break this down. It says, O my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret place of the steep pathway, let me see your form. That's number one. Let me see your form. It says, let me hear your voice, and for your voice is sweet, and your form is lovely. So to actually know, know the Lord and understand his word. You know how people understand it. There could be many people out there that have knowledge and wisdom. But knowledge and wisdom without understanding is nothing. And I've experienced this for myself. Understanding comes from dwelling in the Lord. You know, David had a lot of good understanding. That's why he succeeded. Even at the end, even though he made mistakes, he still succeeded after that and God was for him. So inside these areas, we find out that the secret place, number one, it gives protection from illness. You know, these enemies begin to flee away the more that we dwell in God because the more that He's in us and we're in Him, where is the enemy going to be, right? Hallelujah. Number two, Lord fights the battles. We don't have to fight them ourselves. It actually says in Scripture in Chronicles, it says, Stand, for the Lord will fight. Now, these people didn't even have the Holy Spirit at the time, but the Lord was faithful to do it. So how much more is He going to when we have the Holy Spirit, right? So the Lord fights our battles. We don't have to sit there and get all worn out inside prayer. We focus on Him, bless His name, then begin to continually meditate and learn more of Him, the knowledge of God, and He fights off evil for us. Hallelujah. Number three, gives authority and power. Very important. We grow in authority. It's been given, but we grow in it the more we get the Word of God inside our heart that produces great power of the Holy Spirit. And I'll do a teaching on that sometime, but... Yeah, but that's pretty much signaling that. So number four, his angels will guard you in all ways. It actually says in Psalms 91, a lot of these things, I'm quote from Psalms 91. 91, it goes to say that he will send his angel and they'll guard you in all your ways. Number five, gives true peace. Now he gives true peace. That means that our focus is on him and he is peace. He's the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. So if our focus is on Him always, there's nothing else that can get us distraction. If I make one focal point and commitment unto the Lord and I focus on it, what is going to get me out of that? It won't. Because the enemy will always attack your commitment. Always remember that. So always stay true to the Lord. Hallelujah. Closer I get to Him, He changes me because of His holiness, not mine. Very important that we know this because it's not our righteousness, it's His righteousness that produces righteousness in us. So the closer I get to Him, a lot of people say, if I change first, then I do it, it'll be okay. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to get closer to the one who has changed, it's Jesus. So the more I'm in His presence, His presence is changing my heart. If I'm not feeling God, I need to keep seeking Him until I do, and he, he, I get a heart change. And then everything changes. I come out different. I do that day to day, it rubs off on me. I get closer to the one who's perfect. I become perfect. That means complete in the Greek. 
So when he says, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, it's complete. How do we become complete? Jesus is first in all things. Hallelujah. I hope this has blessed you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.